I'm Larry Menti, this week on Jersey Matters. After the tragic suicide of a 12-year-old New Jersey girl, there is new attention on the plague of cyberbullying. We'll tell you the best places in New Jersey to see this week's solar eclipse. And if you love pinball machines, the Mecca is right here in New Jersey. And in just a moment, we will interview an executive from Amtrak to find out how this summer's repairs are going and when they'll get back to normal service. But first, a few words. When Amtrak started repairs on the tracks at Penn Station in New York, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo labeled the project the Summer of Hell. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie quickly said, I'd like to slap him for that. I think a lot of people feel that way. I think the people at Amtrak felt that way, but they're too classy to say it. Why doom the project before it even starts? Especially since the summer of hell never materialized, it was irresponsible for the governor of New York to label the project that way. He made it sound like a horror film. He owes Amtrak and all of us an apology. And now our interview with Amtrak's Executive Vice President of Planning, Technology and Public Affairs, Stephen Gardner. Stephen Gardner, Gardner, Executive Vice President of Technology, Planning and Public Relations. Thank you so much, sir, for doing this. My I really pleasure. appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, your project in New York at Penn Station started at the beginning of this summer and the Governor Andrew Cuomo came out and titled it The Summer of Hell. Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey afterwards said he would like to slap Andrew Cuomo for saying that. How did you feel about it? Well, I think we understood what the governor meant, which was uh, we were asking city and all of the commuters to um, bear with us while we took a little extra time uh, and some extra space, most importantly, in New York Penn to do some really important work. And we knew that was going to involve some level of disruption. It hasn't and been a summer from hell, though. It has, it has not been. Um, but I, I don't want to uh, in any way minimize the fact that, that people were disrupted. We, we did ask folks to find different ways to get to work. We know some folks, I'm sure, worked from home. Um, but it was incredibly important for us to have the kind of time and, and uh, space in the station so we could under, undertake these major renewals and, uh, in essence, replace a big part of the track down there that it's time to replace and do it in, in a very efficient and effective way. Is it on time at this point? Will you be finished it by is. Labor Day? Yeah, we will be finished. We're moving ahead. Very, it's, it's gone, gone, uh, gone as well as, as we hoped, and um, we are going to be done with this major major period of work uh, as, as promised. And this was made necessary by some particular problems. You, you would hope to do it on nights and weekends, is that right? Yeah, I mean, w you know, it's a very complicated place down there with, with uh, you know, a, a huge number of trains, well over a thousand trains a day. And we've got the tunnels to work on, the tracks themselves, the overhead wires that uh, uh, supply electricity. So we've been undertaking work for really all the time over these past several years, but we've only been able to do that work on nights and weekends. And on weekday nights, it's very few hours available by the time we set up, do the work, take down all the materials to return the tracks to service. Over the weekends, we get these 55-hour blocks. But a lot of the jobs that we need to do are simply bigger than what you can effectively do with these limited windows. Will people be able to notice that there's an improvement when they start riding? Unless you're looking out the window, you might not know, but we'll have completely replaced what's known as A interlocking, which is a series of tracks and switches and signals that allows the trains, when they come in under the river from New Jersey into, into New York, they come in on two, two tubes, and this uh, piece of track um, allows those trains to be sorted across the different tracks and platforms in Penn. So you can think about it as kind of a switching machine that, that sends tracks, there's trains to different tracks. So the way they will notice, there'll be fewer cancellations, there'll be fewer delays, there'll be fewer uh, signal problems? Well, in this area of the station, we should have 
hopefully no problems. It'll all be brand new and it should be in very good shape. And to the extent that there were delays associated with issues there, those hopefully will be gone. But you do have some major infrastructure problems there still. Uh, absolutely. We, we're primarily focused now on track. We still have signals that are, uh, need to be modernized and up, updated. We've got electrical wires. This is what's called the catenary. This is the, the, the electrical wires that provide power to the trains. And fundamentally, um, to do that kind of work requires significant time uh, and space in the station. Is it going to happen? You keep hearing about problems with funding. We think that this program is um, obvious in sort of every respect, right? We have this incredible asset that connects uh, and really sort of integrates the New Jersey and New York economy. And we have so much relying on it every day, more than 200,000 trips uh, uh, and, and between New Jersey Transit and Amtrak. And everywhere I go, we talk about this program, no one doubts the need for a new tunnel, right? The existing one's built in 1910. They've done a great job. It's time, time for them to, uh, to have the benefit of, uh, of a major overhaul. We have the damage from Sandy that we've, we've got to repair. Um, so. We're making great progress through the environmental planning process now. Uh, we're working with all of our partners to figure out all the funding pieces, but, but I think everyone throughout the region shares the sense of urgency and um, the understanding that this is a vital process. It's interesting, when they first talked about it years ago and, and Governor Christie didn't want to put up the money for it, the state was the problem. Now it seems like the federal government's the problem, that the federal government doesn't want to kick in. They would rather see private money be used. Do you see a scenario where they can come up with enough private money to pay for this? Well, I, I, I think, look, this is a complicated big project, and it always is hard to get all the different pieces of the funding in place, particularly in a project that involves as many different stakeholders as this one, because we've got New Jersey Transit, we have Amtrak, we have a bunch of... Um, uh, of sort of interested parties, we have two states, we have the federal government. So I think it's not unusual that it takes time to get everything lined up in, in the basic uh, way you need to for these projects. But I'm optimistic that both the federal, state, uh, and sort of railroad partners here w will ultimately be successful. W we think private participation has a role, uh, and we certainly are interested in doing that. Um, Gateway Development Corp has is, is, uh, just issued a, a request for information about possible ways to, to look at um, private involvement. But in, in our experience, th there's no substitute for the basic public sector investment that's going to be required to do most of these projects. We think um, the private sector could add on top of that and bring expertise and knowledge uh, and capacity that, 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 that maybe all of us don't have, but we don't expect them to do our job for us. But the us. bottom line is you, you believe this has to happen. Absolutely. And when we come back, we will continue our conversation with Steve Gardner, Executive Vice President at Amtrak, and talk a little bit about the possible privatization of Penn Station. And also, uh, there is a new terror alert out there, and it involves trains. We'll continue that conversation when Jersey Matters continues.